so one of my first ever jobs was in cosmetics. And just before that, I was working in a clothes shop um, in the same shopping centre. And I hated it. I hated my manager. She was a bitch. She's not here, is she? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, because she'll hit me. <laughs> I ended up leaving that job and going to work for the cosmetic company. Right. And um, you sort of walk down this fire escape stairs, outside stairs, to get into the staffing. As I was walking, I got to the bottom step, and as I put my foot down, I was like, what the fuck have I just stood in? And it was a dead pigeon. Oh. Like, just, uh. At the mucky stage. And it were, no, at the worst possible yeah, stage, yeah, yeah, to yeah. the point when I think I was wearing, like, Ugg boots, and it was all in the grooves oh. of my shoe. I walked into my uncle once covered in pigeon. Yes, <laughs> sexually deviant pigeon in the attic. <laughs> So I've hobbled to the counter and um, I just found like a foundation brush, got oh. right into the ridges, scooped it all out and threw the foundation brush with dead pigeon in the bin. Sure. I've spied this manager that I hated. She come in proper cocky. She went, oh, here he is. So she was trying to oh. show her. She went, go on then, make me over. <laughs> and I just looked at her and I went, take a seat. Oh. <laughs> I've got a very bad feeling about this. And I went, <laughs> We should do a foundation colour match on you, shouldn't we? She went, yeah, whatever, I'll go and do what you want. So I went, just get your colour. So I reach into the bin <laughs> to get the foundation brush out that I've just used on my shoe. Uh... I got the foundation pot and mixed it together. Oh. I'd done her foundation and she went, oh, it's actually a really nice colour, it's a little bit bitty. Oh. I went, yeah, it's got exfoliating properties, have a lovely day. <laughs> I was 10 years old. My father had a business where uh, sick Iranians would come over from Iran, and there was right. a guy who'd had a kidney operation. So I went there, I was a little 10-year-old boy, a little tie and a suit, and this doctor said, oh, hello, who are you? I said, I'm the translator. He goes, oh, do you speak Farsi? I said, yes. He goes, ask the patient if he slept well. I said, from Uncle Khabidin, he goes, Bali. He goes, yeah, he did. He goes, could you ask him, the patient, if he had trouble after eating, uh, breaking wind? And I, and I didn't understand what that meant. I said, what do you mean, wind? He goes, no, wind, you know, when you past wind, and I said, what, you mean, like, bad weather? He goes, no, and he went, you know, when you eat and you kind of go, like that. <laughs> and I looked at the patient, I said, Shamo, guzim or kambi, like that, do, do, do you give it large, like that, with a fart? I said, do you fart hard, like that? And he said, shadidan, which means extreme now. I said, I said, like a bloody hurricane, like that. <laughs> and, and the doctor laughed, and then he left, and I just sat down with the patient. Now, I launched into a joke. I, I, I can't translate it, but it's a joke like, how do you stop a dog from humping your leg? You pick it up and suck its cock. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and from a ten-year-old, this was really inappropriate. <laughs> and he just, he just went, pa! Ah! Ah! He'd laugh and opened up his stitches. <laughs> when I got home, my dad said, what did you do? Cos I told him the dog joke. Cos what are you doing telling him that joke? <laughs> It's gonna kill him. So I nearly killed a guy when I was 10 years old, and I was never allowed to translate again. Wow. Story. That's a great story. In the late 90s, the way comedians made money, we used to do a weekend at Jonglers. Jonglers oh. was a chain of comedy clubs, and I'd worked my way up from being an opening act, then I was a middle act, then I was a closing act for about a year. But I remember thinking, how can I make more money from you guys? I said, if you would like to MC, I'd never MC'd before. And sometimes you get a, a North American comic comes, like you'd have a Patrice O'Neill, who was like really big comics. And there was one Canadian guy, I hope that's not him there, a guy called Simon B. Cotter. Right. Who was clearly better than everyone on the bill. And I was the MC, got the first act on. You do 10 minutes, and I, I used to finish the evenings with a big disco dance. I remember it. So I'm, and I'm planning I'll do it at the very, very end. Yeah. So I, I get Simon B. Cotter on. He's been so brilliant. And then he goes, thanks very much, guys. Good night. And he got a massive round of applause. And he went off and he stood by the side of the stage. I said, why is he still there? He should, should go inside. He's, he's, like, he's like saying, like, get me back on again for the encore. Oh, wow. And I go, do you want some more? The guy, people go, yeah. I said, you want some more? They go, yeah. I said, put the music on. And I start doing <laughs> disco dancing. <laughs> so I stole his encore. So <laughs> while I'm doing the disco dance. It's really dancing, good. It's good. While I'm doing the disco, I'm looking at him, he's like going, <laughs> and when it finished, I said, thanks so much, good night. And we went into the dressing room. He goes, dude, what the hell were you doing? He goes, that was my uncle. I said, I, I think you'll find they wanted more from me. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I, I did 
<laughs> really well all night. Goes, and he went, dude, you're a disgrace. He complained, and they never booked me again. Oh, my no. God. When I was a little girl, my parents took me to Jamaica, and we kept going back every year. And some people said, would I like some ganja? And I thought, there's money in those trees. But it was like um, the kind of twigs, long twigs, so they wrapped it in newspaper. And it was the days where we had the miniskirt, and I wore it in my underpants. <gasps> and I came through customs, and you could hear crunch, 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 mm. crunch. So I pushed it, and suddenly I had a tail. <laughs> That's how I got the ganja through. Wait, so you were a drug mule? A little. I didn't realise that ganja came in twig form. It comes in twig form, yeah. And I used to sell Girl Scout cookies, so I used the same technique for selling the drugs. <laughs> I would knock on the door and say, look what I have for you. <laughs> do you want a peanut butter cup or do you want some dope? <laughs> But you wouldn't bake them into the cookies. They didn't do that then. You just sold them a branch for 50 bucks and said, it's been near my vagina, and that made the price go so <laughs> high. I was asked to do a presentation for Microsoft with Bill Gates to celebrate 25 years. Whoa. And he hated me. There was just, it was just a cube of flesh with some dandruff. I mean, just horrifying. <laughs> The interview went really badly. You could smell the hatred. And then out comes a chef. So they had a cake to celebrate, and they had big firecrackers. And so both Bill and I, we ran to the back of the cake and both blew to get the sparklers out. But I have more lung capacity than Bill, and I set his eyebrow on fire. <laughs> wow. Bill is standing there, <laughs> and he doesn't notice. And so he's still talking to his boss about the stocks and what the stocks are doing, and I'm watching the fizzle, fizzle, fizzle. So he's got one eyebrow. One eyebrow. It's raining because, you know, the smoke thing yeah, has gone the sprinklers. on. And I, I mean, yeah. to be fair, with all that smoke, he could have opened windows. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. That's very good. I worked for an airline briefly, and I was a check-in person. So if a lovely person came along, let's say a lovely lady, for example, I would give her a really nice seat, um, and then I would keep a note of her seat number, and then if a lovely man came along, I would put them together. <laughs> I would play the god of <laughs> romance. You know, and likewise, if a horrible person came along, I yeah. would put them sitting beside a really horrible person. And, <laughs> and this helped pass the time. But one day, this very objectionable man came along, and he was given out to me for some oh. delay or something, like a storm or something, and he, he was very, very important, you know, and he was going to Washington on a business trip. And I gave him a good seat to Washington, but I sent his bag to Warsaw. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sorry. That is devious. I yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, that's quite unforgivable. The first time I ever went to a restaurant without my parents, I did a runner. I'm sure we've all done it. Have we? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> we've all done it. I mean, it is a terrible thing, and I, I hate myself for doing it. So myself and my friend James, we had never done a runner before, so we didn't know like exactly what was involved or anything. Anyway, we have all our starters and main courses, desserts, and we have the wine and everything. And we're laughing away throughout the whole thing. If you were working in a restaurant, you'd know, what are they laughing at? You yeah, know, they must yeah, be up yeah. to something. And then at the prearranged signal, we ran. We actually trained for this. <laughs> so, and we ran for about two or three miles so as he wouldn't be able to catch us. So that was grand. We got away with it. So the adrenaline is really high and you think this is brilliant. So, you know, so we tried it a few other times and eventually caught out a few years later in London. We were all sitting around a, in a pizza restaurant. Yes. And uh, there was about 10 of us all together. Eight of them ran. I froze. I panicked. <gasps> oh. I had developed a conscience in the meantime or something. <laughs> and so myself and this other guy, we were left behind. And we had to pay for everybody for the whole. No. Yeah. We did something similar. And one of our number, it was not me, during the meal, went out to a local phone box and phoned the restaurant to say that there was a bomb in the Restaurant. <laughs> oh. So they cleared the restaurant. And then you did put a bomb in, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, this is the first time we've met. It's so great to meet you. Anything we should know about you before we start? Uh, well, I said to the production team that I've got an irrational fear of velvet, and then they've sat me in these fucking. <laughs> 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 Stressful episode. Have you, have you really? Yeah, I don't like it. Oh no! What can we do? If I'm just chatting and I suddenly just go, it's because I've just. <laughs> 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 but you have that thing with peaches as well, because they're a bit, they're slightly velvety. I've never even seen a peach. I'm from Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd gone 
out on a night out in town in Birmingham and my husband had picked me and my friend up and it was a Halloween night and I was dressed as, I think, I remember I had stockings on, so I might have been a badger or a crab. <laughs> um, just some kind of sexy animal for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Got back home, went into our flat and then I could see out the window there were some flames and I realised that my car was alight. And I thought, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I went down and, God bless them, the fire service were already there because it had been on fire for 45 minutes already. <laughs> and uh, they said, electrical fault, it just went up <gasps> like that. Oh. Took out the neighbour's car either side. Whoa. They obviously come out, see me dressed as a sexy badger, going, the car's on fire! <laughs> was it uh, burnt through the tarmac into the ground and it took out the whole of uh, the internet for the, the postcode <laughs> that I lived in. Oh, my God. <laughs> and rather than dealing with it, I just fucking moved house. <laughs> <laughs> Sad as I had a sat nav in it, and that cost me hundred pound. And I thought, oh god, and a Michael Barry, Barry, Barry Manilow suit. I thought you were going to say a Michael Barrymore suit. I didn't say the Michael Barrymore suit. Eh? Wow. We all have our losses. <laughs> 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 when I was young. There was a girl I used to go to school with called Claire, and I thought she was my friend. And one week, we went up to our local forest by my house called the Licky Hills. We'd go up, and one time, we were just mucking around in the forest, and she said, I need a shit. <laughs> so Claire just does a shit in the middle of this forest area. And I just go, you've got to go, you've got to go. Next day at school, I find out she's been calling me rat eyes to people. <laughs> it's awful. And also, one time I found this out later, she'd put um, blue tack in my hair and it got stuck and she'd convinced me a ghost had done it and it was her. <laughs> <laughs> so what I then started doing was, oh, if someone gave me 20p, I'd take you up into the forest and show you Claire's shit. <laughs> <laughs> Great. It's brilliant. I, I made about three pounds. <laughs> um, 20p in the hand is worth a poop in the bush. <laughs> Listen, before you all think I'm a prostitute, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to clarify, in my slag days, I do it for free. Listen. <laughs> My very first proper boyfriend. I didn't like him. I didn't like him. No, but you know when you go out with them because you think, I better go out with somebody yeah. soon or people will say I'm a witch. Um, <laughs> so, so I never wanted to split up with him because I was like, I don't want my friends to not like me. I want them to fall out with him. So, <laughs> and we had a mutual friend that he found quite attractive. So I went on MySpace and I messaged her and I said, if I pay you 20 quid, will you cop off with him? <laughs> and she did. Um, <laughs> he then confessed to me that he'd snogged this girl and I was like, I could never trust you again. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, it sounds like you trafficked the poor woman. <laughs> Sometimes, mm. if you've got the money, as Joel does, just spend it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lindsay. Every year, we'd go on holiday, there'd be me, my brother, my sister, my mum, the dog, and my nan and my granddad, and we'd all be in, like, a caravan. So imagine being in a static caravan with all the people you've ever met that get on your nerves. <laughs> 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 so we'd gone out for a walk, and you know when your nan is just going on? Just going... <laughs> and it was raining, and I just wanted to get back in the caravan, and she was moaning, and she was doing my head in. And then she went into the caravan, went into the living room, but she's a bit deaf, you see. So she's still talking, and I've got my hand in the door frame of the door, right, taking my shoes off. And she starts shutting the door to the living room. She's squashing my fingers. So I said, stop pushing the door, but she's deaf. So I went, stop pushing the door! She's still deaf. <laughs> could do was boot the door as hard as I could. She went fucking flying. <laughs> <and> went <over. laughs> I'd do it again. <laughs> Time now for round four and I've entrusted Lou with a bit of responsibility and you're about to see what she did with that responsibility. Cut to the chase. 
she bought a plastic horse. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it has started to gather a little bit of a cult following. <laughs> cult following. No one knows what that is. Oh. Cult following, aka cult following, equals funny. <laughs> Laugh, please. What is it, a cult? A cult is a horse, low. Oh, well, no one knows that I these know days. That. It's oh. Following would be better. Like, oh, a cult yeah. following. Let's see how Lou got on. Horsey, bring on the banter with a canter. <laughs> I want you to pay close attention to the confessions. Some of the details have been obscured and it's up to you to try and fill in the blanks. Let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Your dirty little secret has run its course. It's time to confess to the honesty horse. <laughs> OK, let's go. Come on. <laughs> now. What have you done, you pig? <laughs> one time I was on this dating app, you might have heard of it, called Hinge. I was talking to one girl and I arranged to meet up with her, got to her house. Once I arrived there, I realised she was nothing like her. Her photo is on Hinge. I mean, the face was still the same, but the body was something else. Um, me being a horny guy, though, I thought I'm here, might as well go through. Mm. So, ended up doing the deed. <laughs> After we had some edibles, she wanted me to stay over. And I thought, how can I get out of this? <laughs> now, yeah. where did you go to misogynistic school? I quite like Leon. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. I think I could work with him. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Leon having done the deed with a lady and then having some edibles. I presume he means... Snacks. He wanted to make a swift escape. What did he do? Dan? Maybe he acted like he was going under from the drugs, you know what I mean? He was like, I'm going to have to go, my hands are fucking jellyfish or... <laughs> Rafe? Was it when he realised that he was using language like describing himself as a really horny guy? <laughs> and that her, her face was the same, but her body wasn't all that, that he was a really <laughs> disgusting human being and he went home and cried? <laughs> <laughs> Come over brilliantly, doesn't Leon. I... Leon. Do you think you are Leon? <laughs> I know. I'll give you a clue. Yeah, yeah. go on, Lou. <laughs> he threw up. No. Pretended he was a chicken. Mitch. Ah! <laughs> Let's have a look. That's quite close. So I started acting like I was freaking out. So I was like, I need to get out. I need to get out. So I started doing all these, you know, pigeon movements. Mm. So made my way out, blocked her, never saw her again. Leon, you horny pigeon. Dan, technically yeah. and literally correct. Yeah, he correct. made strange bird-like movements. Well done, Dan. Uh, right, let's have our next tale of remorse within a horse. <laughs> Hello, Jackie. What's your story for me? Many years ago, I worked at a major supermarket. Mm. I was working on the shelf filling to make things a bit more interesting. We used to have a few laughs and there was a woman who worked on the fruit and veg section and nobody liked her. She was a bit of a job's worth and she had an obsession with putting her bananas all in the right way. So what we thought we'd do, we'd have a bit of fun and we'd get back at this woman. Uh, as we were walking past the banana... <laughs> <laughs> and waited for the blood-curdling scream, but it actually backfired. Oh. Because they had to evacuate the store. You must have cost them millions. Yes, <laughs> never to this day confessed that I cost a major supermarket probably millions of pounds in lost revenue. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wow, that was Jackie. She was bored at work, annoying co-worker obsessed with her bananas. What did Jackie do that resulted in a blood-curdling scream and millions lost in revenue. Oh, damn. Did she, like, cut open the bananas, take out the banana, and then put maybe, like, some meat in it or something? Ooh. That's no. what I would do. No. <laughs> mm, borders. I think you're on the right track. Do you really? I do. So if you've got to evacuate, to evacuate a store... Yeah. 
think it has to be a bit more than meat, mm, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think it has to be something that's done something like something she was really frightened of, like shove a mouse in there or uh, something like that. I reckon maybe it's a an different animal. animal. Maybe some maggots or is there something you could buy from a shop? Fish. Fish! Fish guts! Any thoughts, Rafe? Do buzz in. Rafe. Fish. Fish. <laughs> fish. A dead fish. Yeah, some sort of dead fish. Uh, in affair. the bananas. <gasps> Fords. A rubber snake. A rubber She's snake. She's going on the right lines. Because if you fish. saw that, you'd go, wouldn't you? Yeah. Can I just say, yeah. my mother once, back in the 60s, she bought a bunch of bananas and then there was a tarantula pouch at the end of the thing and this thing burst out and there were a lot and she had to run round the living room with a broom. Fords, are you psychic or something? Let's find out from Jackie. Now, I don't know if you know, but every year tarantulas shed their skin mm. and it leaves like an intact shell of a tarantula which actually looks like a, a real tarantula uh, as we were walking past we just wrapped the tarantula round a banana and waited for the blood curdling scream and when she found the tarantula skin did she go bananas <laughs> <laughs> she had to take a bit of time off work over for stress <laughs> oh jackie you're absolutely not <laughs> The detail! So after I was on X Factor, I had a residency in a club in Mallorca, so I used to fly out every Tuesday, perform three songs, fly back, and then I'd do Big Unforgivable Brother. Unforgivable on the environment. Yeah. <laughs> I had the residency on the Tuesday, and another pop star had the residency on a Wednesday night. And the club owners, I was talking to them, and I was saying, like, oh, what's that person like? And they were mm -hmm. saying, absolute prick. Treats us all like shit. Um, really, really rude to people. Was it Lulu? Yeah, it was Lulu. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> you go to. And every single week, he would have the same bottle of whiskey and only have one drink from it. One dram. So on my last night, I decided to find said bottle of whiskey after I'd had a few drinks. I topped it up myself. Ah. Uh. I used my penis. <laughs> and was it whiskey? It was whiskey. <laughs> And I got a video sent to me the following day of said pop star drinking the bottle of whiskey. <laughs> Dry from the bottle. Oh, whiskey sour. Literally, very sour. Whoa. Very who sour. was it? I'm never going to say who it was. Well, they Give could work it out, though, because they would know. Oh, fuck, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used to um, be in a boy band in Ibiza. And we lived in this apartment complex of, like, six apartments. So there was, like... Us, take that in Westlife. Robbie Williams was next door. Cool and the gang were upstairs. Abba were up to the right. Amazing. It was like Fame Academy on crack. <laughs> cool and the gang, we had a bit of an issue with. They were just very untrustworthy. They were lurkers. They were proper lurkers. And we used to leave our doors open. And I noticed that my sunglasses, they've been robbed. Oh. Someone's walked into my apartment and they've robbed my sunglasses. And I went, it's fucking cool in the gang. <laughs> I know, I, you know, you just know. You know. I know, I had the Absolutely. feeling. Absolutely. So yep. I've marched upstairs, ready for an argument. Thought, I'm going to see one of them wearing them. No one's there. But again, doors are open. Thought, oh, fuck this, I'm trashing your apartment. <laughs> so I walked in there, I turned everything upside down. <gasps> I, the telly was on the floor, I was fuming. Were you so, singing cool in the gang songs I, I was like, as do you did you it? remember? <laughs> I was really, I was really, I was really going to surf with the fight. I even, I was that petty. I remember getting a bottle of Fanta lemon. Obviously, you're abroad out of <laughs> the fridge and poured it all under their beds because wow. I knew they'd get ants. Like, that's how uh, wow. I was fuming. Ooh. And I chucked it all down. I've gone downstairs and I thought, fuck you, like that. Come downstairs, I've heard them come in and all like, oh, my God, something's going on here, rah, rah, rah. And I'm like, yeah, fuck. They're, like, sitting down there, like the, the old lady downstairs. Yeah. Two days later, I found them down the side of my bed. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you apologise? Absolutely not. <laughs> When I was about 13, my dad was working as a LED salesman. So he had a work computer at home which had the internet. And me and my best friend, Kaya, used to sneak into my dad's office <laughs> and go on his computer and basically try and find images that would make each other laugh. And I don't know how it happened. But I found a porn image <laughs> of a woman with a carrot up her foof and in her ass. 
<laughs> Just trying to get a five a day. <laughs> virus on my dad's computer. <laughs> and my dad phoned his boss and his, his boss said, right, take it to the IT guy at work. Oh. <laughs> so he gets a call from his boss saying, can you come in to, oh, to work, please? Oh, dear. So they have this big meeting, cos we downloaded, like, hundreds of porn images on my dad's <laughs> computer. And what was even worse, was the virus had actually emailed that picture of the carrots to some of his clients. <laughs> oh, oh my dad. <laughs> fuck, it was sat in this fucking big board meeting and they're going, Paul, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and he's going, I don't know. And they're going, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. And I've never told my dad that it was us. Uh, he's good. He doesn't know. No. My ex-boyfriend took me to a wedding of this girl I'd never fucking met her. I, all I heard was there was free booze there and I was there. <laughs> there was like a sort of pick and mix table. So I stuffed my bag full of sweets. <laughs> then I saw loads of disposable cameras on the table. And I thought, oh, fucking hell, I'll bag some of these. So I took <laughs> all of them. And then it wasn't until I got back home and I realised all the film had been used. Oh, so no. what she'd asked is for all her guests, rather than getting a photographer, <laughs> all her guests to take oh. pictures of her at her wedding day. Oh. And I'd just taken all of these valuable memories for no fucking reason. <laughs> and then I just fucking put them in the bin. <laughs> Daisy May Cooper. Me and my brother, when we were kids, and there was a very sweet couple they ran a B and B, and she would often sunbathe topless in the garden out the back. <laughs> and it had just. Oh my God! Is she nodding her head? Is that her? <laughs> oh my God. There is a nod. There's a bit of a nod going on there. Who knows? Could you just stick your boobs to the door? We see if we see if we recognise them. So it had been my like tenth birthday, and I'd been bought like some mint matchmakers, which I fucking hate by some miserable old aunt probably. <laughs> so me and my brother were really bored, and we saw her sunbathing next door, and we decided to play darts. <laughs> <laughs> Matchmakers on her tits. <laughs> Long ones or the short ones? They're short, they were like that. Nice, it, so you it, got loads of them. <laughs> if you landed them. one down here, you could have said that's your snatch maker. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like 25 points for getting it on the tit, and then it would be 50 to get it on the areola, <gasps> and then 100 to get it in the nipple. So we were fucking doing it all afternoon. <laughs> And the sun got hotter and hotter and she was asleep. <laughs> she had this melted chocolate. And we waited and she woke up and she looked down and was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, don't let it be her. <laughs> I thought I'd take that to my grave. I don't want to see it again. I went to the Isle of Wight and I went into this sort of weird wicker shop and they had for sale the death mask of a gangster called John Dillinger. And I thought, fucking hell, I've got to have that. I don't know why. <laughs> and I think he killed a lot of people and he ended up dying. And my <laughs> boyfriend hasn't forgiven me because we feel like it's caused the death of our two pet rabbits Whoa. who just fucking dropped down dead and died for no reason <laughs> when since i bought this thing in and we've had like walking up and down the stairs at what? night i feel like i've opened up a fucking vortex no <laughs> so you've still got the mask of john dillinger I've, yeah i'm not giving that up <laughs> <laughs> Get rid. Get rid. I just worry that he's just a bit pissed off that I bought him mm. and sort of put him in the toilet next to, you know, the potpourri. <laughs> What's weird is she's kept the mask. Yeah. <laughs> this is all your fault. Do you yeah, think it's related yeah, to yeah, that? Yes. 
Oh, fuck. <laughs> My dad's seen a ghost by the hot tub since this fucking mask. Oh, way to tell us you've got a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> I was at high school in Australia. Yeah. And I didn't really have a very good time in high school. No, Reuben, why? <laughs> and... <laughs> but contrary to popular belief, I had friends. I had two friends, and we <laughs> stole one of the video cameras from the media studies room, and we went around and filmed a full documentary on the teachers and stalked our teachers. My friends are very... They're not like me. They're not awful. They're nice people. One of them is, was, like, an ambassador to Vietnam, and the other one is, like, very intelligent, but she's a mum, so dead to me. <laughs> and we stalked our teachers, like, to their homes, filming in their windows. We found my English lit teacher smoking two cigarettes at the same time in her car at recess. <laughs> and we did a full David Attenborough commentary on them as I was following them. And I went, this is... Richard Maddox, 70% water, 30% fuckwit, <laughs> and completely so out of his depth, drowning victims looked down on him. <laughs> and I was really like a punching bag in the school. I was like the only gay kid in my school. The only gay kid, can you believe? <laughs> and what was that laugh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's statistically impossible. Correct. <laughs> um, he was back in the warehouse then. <laughs> <laughs> And we played it on the final night of the school musical for the entire cast. What? And for that one night in high school, I was a god. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. In my earlier days, I did panto. And I had a panto dame who was really lovely. And she had this moment where the panto dame comes out with a big tray of sweets and starts throwing sweets to the kids. Yeah. And you get a bit mischievous in car. So I sometimes would find little pranks to play. And one of the things I did was I would put funny things on the bottom of the tray, like lovely. little photos of us. Lovely. So I, I was going to make this person laugh. So one time I just put a photo on the bottom of the tray and covered it all up with sweets. And when she came out to throw the sweets, the photo was revealed and it was a photo of me with one of the candy canes up my bum. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I was actually at that performance. What? I thought the candy cane was covered in chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> was it the hook side or the... <laughs> <laughs> So I had to go another step further, and uh, look, I'm Australian. I don't really know your history, so I, I, uh, I don't know how this is going to go. <laughs> so I just, I, I put a photo of Myra Hindley's headshot on the tray and covered it up. <laughs> I've actually frozen. <laughs> and that was, that's the reaction I was frightened of. <laughs> Of course, she comes out and goes, hello, kiddies, and starts throwing it off to her and reveals it and goes, oh, that's enough sweets for today. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So the mention of the MH words, that's a wrong gong, which is very bad, but also very good because you get an extra point. <clears throat> Rylan, you are very recognisable. Does that mean that you can't get away with doing naughty stuff in public? Yes and no. I have had some naughtiness abroad, but not as Rylan. Oh, yeah. alter ego? Yeah, so I went away for the first time on my own. <gasps> got on a plane by myself. Oh. Um, <laughs> and was like, you know, I'm doing this to find myself. I wasn't, I was doing it to find a man. Um, <laughs> and I started talking to someone in a bar. This guy was like, what's your name? And without even planning or thinking, I went, Joshua. <laughs> and he went, oh, nice to meet you, Joshua. What do you do? And at the time, I was going for a divorce, so I just went, I'm a family lawyer. <laughs> so for three days, I was Josh, the family lawyer. And um, I got away with it up until the last night when I met some of his friends and we all went for dinner. And I just heard, oh, my God, not <laughs> Rylan. <laughs> British hen party ruined it. <laughs> Do you know what? I am so starstruck. It's unbelievable. Is like, it me? No, it's him. <laughs> My mum loves supermarket sweep, yeah. She calls me, she's like, Fatiha, this uh, Dale Winton, he never grow old, Fatiha. <laughs> <laughs> That's genuinely the biggest compliment I've ever got in my career. Let her 
Nothing's changing apart from this one small thing we're changing our name to you and Dave, but apart from that, nothing's changing, nothing at all. What? From the 16th of July, Dave is becoming you and Dave. Same channel, new name. Exactly the same.